Okay, uh, welcome all to the uh, February 5th meeting of the uh, Board of Water and Sewer Commissioners. Uh, open with a uh, ple with Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> You didn't say two. <laughs> I know. Okay. Um, we've got three sets of minutes. Actually, we were all here for the, um, for the uh, executive session meeting, so we can take care of that one, and then the meeting, the regular meeting, and the executive session minutes for November sixth, and. Minutes for January 8th. Do we need Jay and Fred here to do the January 8th? Right. Uh, it's a regular meeting. Um, we were all here, so it wasn't. Oh, you weren't, right? Oh. That's, that's right. You. That's right. You were cruising. That's good. Yeah. I make a motion to accept the minutes for November 6th. The regular meeting or regular the executive meeting first. Session? Okay. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. All right, we've got the executive session minutes. And there is <coughs> nothing. Um, nothing in that that is. Okay, uh, Concerns being uh, that would preclude it from being released to the public. So Are they? There is nothing there, no. But we do. We do have. Uh, when we you accept know. them, they'll become. Uh, I think the motion to approve the November sixth executive session minutes. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And uh, we're short quorum for the uh, January, I mean, the January meet minutes, so I guess we'll hold off on those. Uh, all right. You are. Scott Butler. Scott Butler, okay. Um, number five, you said he's not coming? No, no. Okay. All right. So, um, Scott Butler for Susan Drive? Yes. Um, come on. I got some plans. You want them? Sure. Sure. I got three. You guys can take it. Okay. I'm lucky enough to get my engineer up there and he, he did it for me quick. I just bought the lot that comes through with a town water and town sewer. Hey, and no we've checked with the uh, sewer department, and there is a uh, tap off the, on the property for sewer. And we just got to go in Italian water. Um, we're not 100% sure on that. We just got this <laughs> today, and we're looking, Mike and I were talking about it. We have to kind of go into the manhole and see if there is a stub off to that. I'm. From previous lots, they were water and sewer going, connections going off into these lots, okay? Yours, I can't tell. I was going off to your lot trying to see if I could find it. There's too much equipment and debris on it, so I can't really okay. do much. Um, you got to give us a little time. We're going to look into it, see if there is a stub. Or not. I mean, it's not going to slow you down really any. No, th we were up there clearing it. We yeah. got to stump it and stuff. And the only time is if I could get some clearance in there, I can go in with my locator. See, because that's how I found the last one when they put yeah. the one further down. Okay. Uh, we don't have good records on that whole thing there. Uh, the so guy who owned that lot was the builder originally oh, okay. that okay. did the development, and he kept that lot for himself. Mm -hmm. And he was going to build his retirement home on it. Before he had a chance to, he passed away. Yeah. 
you know, so could have used his, uh, his know-how now, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah. I, I don't, we don't carry much on that. And like I said, the last time we had done it, we, I just struck it lucky by hitting it with a magnetic locator oh, okay. and, and found it. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'm, I'm gonna figuring try. there isn't a, a, oh, yeah, a crib stop okay. for water. Right? That's oh, what I'm there. leaning towards, but like I can't confirm it. And when I went on there today, I, yeah. I had too much, uh, too many trucks and stuff, so I was getting signals off well of that. Oh, okay. So we're going right? to, if yeah. you can try to get the guys to move the equipment in. They're the moving, the, the woodcutters are coming up tomorrow and taking them out. The only thing that's up there is my excavator, yeah. and I can move that towards the back. If you can try to flatten everything down to the whole front area there, and not dig down anywhere, because like I said, if it's down there, it's going to be a couple inches down. The oh, there could be a crib. Could be, there could be. I'm not saying there is, but there's possibility of it. Okay. All right. Um, if there was planned out lots like the other ones, there were. No, we no, found no, some on the other lots. Oh, all right. Yeah. Sue and I, uh, Mike and I, will look and see about as far as the um, the uh, tie, either finding it through the manhole, cameraing it. Yeah, or you know, we'll just have to saddle it up, saddle the lateral in at that point, or you guys tie it okay. in direct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but let, give us a little time. Let's see if we can come around. Not a problem. Not a problem. Standard three bedroom home, no. Uh, no split ranch. Split ranch, nice and simple. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, so it's over here. I'll be a three quarter inch service standard into the home. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not a one inch? No. We don't require right. one inch. No. It's up right, right here. Three quarters. Hey, I just did one in Webster. Then. We had to do one inch. Webster's different. They, they yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. We're trying to conserve water now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for today we're looking for permission to tie in, correct? Right. For water and sewer. Um, <coughs> I can't imagine that. That's not a special lot or anything like that. I can't imagine where they stubbed everything else out and it's not, it's not stubbed there. But in any case, if it's not stubbed, then it'll, you can still tap the line. No problem. Yeah, it's either either or. We're still looking into it. The other ones we did find way back when they did other houses. In there. Yep. Well, so I can't. Nice I don't. I don't have any definitive <laughs> plan on this. It just makes it easier. If it yeah, is, makes but. it a lot easier. But <laughs> wouldn't be the first time we had to go out the road and get it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, it's not. It's like the main ain't far away. So no. It's right there. The sewer's right there too. Yeah. I've got no problem either or, depending on what we find. But we just can need a little more time to look into find it. Okay. Um. Well, figure out the fee fees, Jen? Yep, yeah, he's already filled out applications on hold in case, and he's aware of all the fees. Depending okay. on what it is, could be one fee for connection only, or it could be a actual. Right. Okay. Um, what's the. Do sewer first, Chairman? Sure. Make a motion to approve sewer connection for the poor Susan Drive. Okay, motion's been Second. made. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So sewer is, is, is good. Uh -huh. uh, make a motion to approve connection, water connection for four Susan Drive. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. It was easy. Okay. It was easy. That was easy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm up in there, I can't imagine it's going to be. No, it's a nice thing. Um, Everything else, everything else has been. It's not a. It was done. Another lot towards the corner, right? No, no. no the, the, this lot's kind of funny it's shaped. Like an L. Yeah, it it does an L, and then there's a house on the corner. Yeah, in I mind view. I just <laughs> looked it up on the map on the on the internet, and I thought that was right on the corner. I said, Nah, that can't yeah, be. There's, yeah. a house, there's a house here. Yeah, you can yeah. tell it's the owner of the, the development. Kind of I'm sorry. Yeah. You can tell it was the lot was picked out for the owner of the development yeah. because he made it bigger for himself. Yeah. You know. So oh. then next week you just need to stop by with 350. Okay. To hold everything and then. Get you, do I get your signatures for the water and sewer or do I leave my building permit here or? Um, no, I, I can do that. Okay. You drop off the check. I'll just pay for everything. Get well, I'm not, he's oh, not you, 100%. Oh, he's got to find out. Well, yeah, give us a week or so. We, okay, we just want to right. Give me yeah. the 350 because that will hold you for a year. Okay, awesome. So, not that it's going to take that long. But. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Uh, Legacy Lynn Airport Road. We have a letter in our packet um, concerning uh, extension <coughs> of approval for uh, Legacy Landing on Airport Road. Um, the they're looking for an extension on the uh, permit. 
Yeah, I mean, I have no problem uh, backing a extension, but on the stipulation, it's being sold. It's on the market. Is it? Yeah, okay. And I don't know about the water side, but I know sewer connections do not go with the have to they have new owner ha, have to reapply they do not it's not sold with the with the land okay the, but yeah they're um, they, yeah the availability is still there but uh, they will have to come in and a new owner will have to come in and ask for a connection and yeah. ask for yeah, okay okay what's the um, actually this is from last year and you said uh, mr. Uh, the, he's, he's in Florida he's in Florida yeah. and he inquired about extending it another year okay okay what's, what's we, we charge take the fees up front right we take a three hundred and fifty dollar fee to hold the permit for a year <clears throat> okay 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 we and he's aware of that yes okay make a motion to extend the sewer, is it for sewer, right? Uh, this water. is sewer and water. Oh, so well, you want to do them separate or you want to do them together? Um, you can do it together. You can do it together, yeah. I, I don't see why we can't do it together. Uh, make a motion to extend the approval for water and sewer for a legacy landing development on stipulation of the payment. Okay. Second. Uh, Motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Eisenhower Drive. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm happy to report we're making some progress on that. Nothing's been done since 2008, but um, we've met twice with Mr. Haney. Uh, first time, but a couple weeks back. <coughs> with the town administrator Bill Scale and myself, Mike Krejcik, and uh, Mr. Haney. <coughs> and we uh, addressed our concerns, what has to be uh, done to meet, uh, meet our acceptance of this pump station. The consequences if we don't get something done rather quickly with it, because uh, we've been on borrowed time so long. Uh, we've been lucky nothing's happened, except way back I did replace one of the pumps. Uh, Back in 2016, I was intern super, uh, sort of intern superintendent, and we we had a ship, uh, one of the pumps let go, so I replaced one. So one shouldn't be in bad shape. The other one I can't speak for, and that's something we're going to look into. But anyway, um, he did get a co he wanted some copies of some plans to show what was supposed to be done at the station as far as his end of the deal. Um, we po postponed it for a couple weeks to give him some time. We met today, this morning again, same group of people. Um, we found, actually, I'll give uh, Mike Krejcik some uh, kudos and Bill Scanlon. They both came up with some documentation that was buried uh, and did find that the station did require certain things that weren't put into it in the beginning. Okay. I've had conversations with uh, <coughs> Louis Gribb, former superintendent. Um, he gave me some insight on it, but a lot of the questions that I had asked him really weren't answered. As to why some things went they were so I left it at that uh, and I moved forward with it and uh, Mr. Haney got the uh, um, full um, architectural plan uh, of the, what the pump station needed in it um, we're taking it in steps right now uh, the first thing I've, I've asked him to do and okay to take certain monies from the bond money because it's his uh, like I said I have permission now to work on the, in the area uh, around the station I have written consent by him. Uh, the first thing we're going to address is we're putting a riser cover on, taking the top hatch off, putting a riser top, sealing it, putting the hatch cover back on the top, making it the grade of the land so that we're not getting any more infiltration of water into that <coughs> station. It's been ongoing, like I said, since probably 2008 because it ends up, and because of the low grade of it, there's a big puddle that forms from all the runoff that comes down, goes right in the station. Okay. Uh, the next steps, he's going to be looking for Are his. What's that? We're fixing that. <coughs> we're this doing negotiation we're, with. Yeah, we're we're supervising it. They're going to be coming in with a crane and, and the top, putting a riser top on. This is going to come out of the bond money. He's paying for it. Right? He's paying okay. for it. Uh, we're taking this all in steps, because um, 
he he's going to go ahead since we've already looked at this because it was an emergency thing we were looking at it already so we already laid the groundwork for that part of it and it and we got it at a pretty good cost uh, rounded up then everything was going was going to be uh, pretty like 2400 bucks for everything so he was happy with that part of it next stage of the operation is going to be he's going to look for his contractor or uh, any contractor to come in and perform the rest of the work we're going to work side by side with him to every step of the way to make sure that if he's going to do it or he's going to have us do it or whatever what the steps are what's next and how much money we're going to be involved with at each step because it's all going to be coming out of that bond money if there's anything left that that, that is not going to be incurred by him or it's going to end up uh, uh, costing the sewer department to finish off it's going to go in litigation after that and it's going to be re we're going to go after the monies for that but i'm not i hope we're not going to have to go Step. If you you're doing the work, we're getting paid for it, right? We're not doing we're not doing any work. We're supervising the, the work okay. right now. We're, the, well, you said you know, whether you do the work or not. Yeah, no. Um, I if any work gets done, maybe some graveling around it by us, which is nothing. I have tons of that, and it's not. I'm not going to nitpick little things. If he's going to end up getting the big things done, because I could get myself again, you know, he's going to start rebelling a little bit, and, and we're not going to get progress made. So we we got right now the first step done, ready to go work on the sec next steps as we go. He's on vacation for like a couple weeks. He, I'm giving him a little time to get his contractors together and see uh, who he wants to pick for the next part of the operation. The rails, the steps, uh, the electrical tie-in for the generator and the call, the dialer uh, has to be installed, okay. Uh, the pumps are also gonna be inspected uh, to see what the condition of the pumps, that's a big factor too. Uh, I'm gonna have uh, LaFleur come in and do that so he understands that part. That's like the next step. So, so that's good news. He's it, paying for LaFleur? He'll be paying, that'll be coming out of the bond money, whatever is okay. incurred by that. Like I said, if we get to an impasse and if I'm close and, I, and, and we have to put out a little bit to finish it so we can accept it, uh, we'll go after it legally uh, through, the, the, through the attorneys. That's by the town administrator and myself. Uh, uh, on Tom's point, keep track, if you're not billing them, keep track of everything yeah. you do. So, because you're gonna wanna add that in if you do go yeah. litigation. Yeah, right. I explained to him also, there are gonna be costs incurred, certain things that we may miss that come up, or certain issues we come up with this and that. But uh, we're taking baby steps right now, as long as there's some progress, as long as they get that station raised up a bit, start moving forward, start moving forward so we get the infiltration out of the <coughs> way, I can wait a little bit as far as that goes. Um, but right now, uh, if, I, if something happens in the station, like I explained before, we have a uh, overflow, something happens, uh, we have a due diligence to, to respond to it, uh, it, but it's going to get into a major turmoil of who, who's blaming who, who pays for what, blah, 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 blah. We don't own it. We're not paying for it. Well, you, you can't say that because we, we are, we, can uh, we, fix we, are it. we have a responsibility to the infrastructure. We do. We can fix it if it's an emergency. That's and correct. That's what we're going to do. But we're not, like even the gravel, we're not paying for it without... Well, the, that'll be done through the legal courts. The courts will have to recoup the losses through the courts. But in the meantime, we'll have to initiate the expenses to make the repair or to, or to uh, mitigate the situation. Like if we have to come in and pump it or what have you, because that's, that's part of our responsibility is take it, because that's part of our infrastructure that's working right now. And, it, and the houses are, are, you know, the sewer's being discharged through us and we're getting fees and stuff. So I want to make sure that the residents don't get into an issue uh, of, you know, everything's sitting still and the sewer just running down the street. Uh, who's taking care of it? Well, it's going to be us, of course. Will we get out and go after it? Absolutely. He's been told that. But if it's not working and you have to pump it, it's up to him to pay for the pumping. Well, you, you could, we can, we can of course, submit the bills to him and, and say, hey, we had an emergency, had to be pumped. It may go into litigation after that. I don't know. He, or he may just pay for it. We don't know. Okay. But I'm trying to avoid all that. I'm trying well, to get this thing done as soon as possible and, and avoid all the problem with that. So we're making some nice progress anyway. Like I said, it's been sitting since 2008. Nothing's been done. So now, finally, something's getting done. So we're, we're on board, with, and he's on board with what we're trying to do. So that, that, that part's okay there. So that's kind of the update as it stands right now with, with Eisenhower Drive. It's, it's, it's ongoing, but it's progress in it moving forward. I would say keep track of hours. Anything you guys do, hours, yep. material, everything, keep, and you yeah, put keep, it towards a bill. Keep a log. Yeah. Just <coughs> like you said, if it goes... If it does go to litigation, we're going to need to. Uh, mm -hmm. we can cool Even that. after you get everything done, you submit in those bills and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got the town administrator and, uh, and, and he's right on board with it too, and he's keeping an eye. Uh, he's pretty pleased. At least we're making some progress on this thing because he knows what the consequences down the line if we move forward. Okay. Any other questions? Good right. job.
uh, Station 3. <coughs> Uh, as you guys know, Station 3 is three quarters done right now as far as the project, uh, putting in a 60 horsepower replacement submersible well pump, uh, well tied in, we tied into the station. Um, right now, we just completed the 48 hour pump test and sampling. When they do that, that's required by DEP. It's mm -hmm. also a, uh, a coliform and now a PFAS test, uh, automatic, this, uh, before we even allow to do anything with it. Uh, they'll be coming out to check, they'll be checking on that. Uh, quality samples probably be three to four weeks. I'm, it could be on the long range, but I'm hoping around two weeks, two to three weeks. Uh, they're not sure. Depends on backups, things like that. So they have to come out and take the samples? They already did that. Oh, so they that's did. all set. Yeah, so that's all we're just done. waiting for. Waiting for that. Then the DP will come from, out for a review. For yeah, DP will come out for a review visit, checking how we're going to uh, tie the well into the station, which we have not done yet. That's coming down the line. It's also going to be weather permitting. I don't expect no major frost. Um, they're going to have to okay that plan through the engineers and that, how that's going to tie in. So what, what you see on the station, if you look at the station to the right of the station, that's where the well is going to be on that little parcel there. And what we'll do is, that the, uh, according to the floodplain rules, you'll have to take some, balance some. Um, so when we remove some, you'll have to rem they're, they're seeing if we can remove it from one side and another to keep everything balanced for the floodplain. We, the engineers have come up with a plan where we can make it easy enough to make it so we can uh, mount, uh, put the well in and then grade around it at the height ready for the, uh, uh, so that it can be serviced, so that we can have it properly going into the station at a certain angle, come into the building at a certain angle, gives it a little more room for a flow meter, and, and then what we're gonna do is tie, uh, take a section of the piping out. There'll be the old pump still be in place, the old shaft pump, I'm requesting the DP that I keep that online in case I need it for backup, okay? But not to run in conjunction with the other one, just on a separate. So the main pump will run, the new one, and then if we want to switch off and give that one a rest or whatever, I can throw the other one on at, at, you know, at, at different intervals, okay? But it'll still have to be tested for bacteria or whatever. Um, so that stage is coming up now. I, I'm expecting um, the um, station to be online sometime in March. That is my goal. That's what everybody's looking at right now if everything goes correctly. Um, so. Uh, it, it's, it's looking pretty good. The, the, everybody's saying it's probably the fastest they've seen uh, a station for well replacement get up, get up and go from the start. It's going pretty quickly. So, so we're lucky that way. So that's, that's where we stand right now on Station 3. When Station 3's project has come to commencement, we're going to be uh, moving right over into the Station 1 uh, development engineering phases for that. And that's already sort of begun. It has begun now uh, in small increments. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Um, number ten. Uh, the uh, yep. this meeting um, on the thirteenth. Thirteenth at two o'clock. Thirteenth of uh, February at two right. o'clock here in the town hall. <coughs> um, just a little background on that too. I, uh, I've been in uh, constant uh, meetings with the town administrator, the town treasurer, uh, and it was thought to be the best for everybody if we had a general workshop meeting to include a couple, a few of our uh, commissioners, the chairman, vice chair, and Mr. Sullivan, who's very versed in a lot of this type of thing with borrowing from, like, SRF and that. And a couple, two, maybe two of the selectmen, or one or two of the selectmen, and the town administrator and the town treasurer. Have a workshop about what our course of and action the engineer, should be. The engineers are involved in this. And the engineer, I'm sorry, the engineers too, uh, yes. Ty and Vaughn. They're going to be there too. Uh, to give an update of what the whole process we're going through right now, the projects that we might want to uh, go for for articles and funding, the projects we, we may not, we may want to hold back on, the type of funding we want, the type of uh, uh, borrowing we want to do. I won't get into the whole details now. Yeah. But it would be, a, but at first they were looking at uh, putting it on the general. Uh, uh, selectmen's meeting. I didn't think that was a good idea because uh, there's going to be too much involved. People be tired from the whole meeting. Uh, you're going to have too many voices out there. It'd be better just a group of people who are working to concentrate on what has to be done. And I'll go with whatever the general consensus is of who, how the type of funding we do, either debt exclusion or borrowing, certain borrowing or SRF or whatever have you. I'm still waiting on the SRF loan. It looks good as far as us getting it, uh, according to the engineer, they've added more mon funding to the to the SRF. But in another way, it may hinder us a little bit. So I've got to I've got to put everything on the table. 
what we have and the projects we have and, the, and what everybody feels is the best route to go. And I think that meeting would be the best way to do it so everybody's on the right page because the articles will be coming right down the pike at the town meeting. And I need to have all that ready to go to present it so that we can get going. Because if I miss everything, uh, we're gonna be in trouble. I gotta get everything ready to go for the, for the ongoing Station 1 project. Station 1 is going to be done. I, I don't care if, what, how it's done, it's going to be done. We need it. Uh, we need that station back online. Um, that's a must. The town ministry has been knows about it. Uh, the other thing is I'd like to do Mason Road, AC water replacement, uh, main up there. I think I maybe can sweep those comfortably. Uh, the rest of it, as far as the tanks uh, and further down, I could possibly push off a little bit or do one one at a time to another means. Um, uh, these projects right now are, are fairly important, and even Mason awesome. Road is important with the amount of breaks we keep getting. Now we them. want station one so we can leave the other stations. Correct. And, and that'll, that'll augment our supply so that when these town, say these town projects come up, uh, these town do things in with like the factories and the Stephen well, say yeah. we, we can at least sustain ourselves. We'll be we'll be okay. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not going for a fourth water source, and I can explain that later. But it just means that with station three, we're back to three running stations. Uh, we can cert we can. So uh, I was under the understanding that station one is going to we're putting that back online to alleviate the other stations. Well, station one was always a third a third line station until back in 2000. That it was shut down. Right. So we've been running on just on two now, which means we, we, we our recovery is very slow. On a hot day or a lot of demand, or we had major fire or something, our recovery right. is very very slow, and it's also very dangerous. We don't have enough redundancy in water, even for the state's mandated uh, thing. But uh, right now, it'll alleviate big pressure on those other stations. I can ro I can rotate them in the second or third positions and keep station one in the first or whatever. But, but are we counting on that station to get more volume? We're, we're counting on more supply to get more supply back into our tanks quicker, and to alleviate to get twenty four seven get back like to the level we were at. Yeah, like when we have twenty four hour on one or two stations all the time, yeah. that'll alleviate that too. We can regulate them so each station may run ten hours each, or one may run a little longer, or whatever. It gives us much more flexibility. But if we increase our volume, those stations are going to be running more than they need. No, no, they'll be actually running less. If we get more <coughs> pumping into the tanks together, they'll start shutting down at certain intervals more faster. It'll, it'll, it'll alleviate a lot of runtime on the stations and more control by us. And and also supply. Uh, well, not resupply. if we're using up the water as fast as we pump no, it in. No, no, oh, no, no, no. And matter of fact, uh, this doesn't give us a whole lot of room for adding com adding customers. No. That's what big, that's adding what I'm big use customers. Yeah. It, what, what it will do is. Um, Get us back to more. where we were. <laughs> I mean, right, we, that's we what I'm saying. It's not going to, we're not going to, by putting one back online, we're not going to take on another development of a thousand houses. Or well, uh, we can take on th some more things than we normally would be able to. Yes. I would be, we could take on that school, that Ethan Allen project. We could do that. We could take on the, the Stevens Linden project. No, that's no problem. Problem is, is that, is that if I don't do this station right now, not only can I take on those, but I have to start throwing out moratoriums very quickly because our, our usage in the summertime has been dramatic. I have, what I do have is now that Station 3's new pump will be coming online, I have a way of regulating that station better so that I can shut down Station 6 more and keep it in the second position because now I'm using two wells over there, one new one and all backup and the other one will be the backup one. My primary objective right now is to keep Station 6 uh, toned down a little bit because my draw there is, is restricted by DEP. And I also can save on that pump. I'll have a new pump at station three with the new well. So that's, that's, that's great there. And I'll have the backup from the old well too. So I can keep those in the lead more. But you're not pumping any more I'm volume. not pumping any more, but I can pump more if I want. I'm not keeping it at the highest pumping rate. I'm keeping it minimal, okay? Um, but I can go higher if my demand calls for it. That's the other thing about station three. I'm still able to go for 450 gallons per minute. I'm only setting it around 300. So I have a, I have a climb factor. But you gotta remember one thing, I gotta keep the stations regulated at a certain amount going out because if two stations go on and they're pumping so much, they'll blow the mains down at uh, Ridge Drive where it's trans Transite Pipe. Yeah. But I can keep that station running almost to the point where it might run all itself and keep station six off altogether. That's without, that's without question too. This is just going to bring me back to the three stations we've had so that we can accommodate more 
more buildup in town uh, where we couldn't now for the last many years. I just want to kind of let you guys know that. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So I can talk about the fourth supply. Yeah. That, uh, okay. Um, reports. Uh, reports. We have those here. Um, I'll try to rather, rather than reading. Yeah, I won't read it all, but I'll, I'm going to highlight a few highlights. things. Um, just quickly, the one on number eight. Um, we did attend a meeting. Um, oh, yeah, I was there at that. As, yeah, Scott was there too. I think that was a good meeting, and I think the, the, the meeting was designed for preparedness and vulnerability of the towns. The state put it on. It also puts us out there for, for more chances at grants, along with the block grant uh, thing we're doing. Uh, so that that's that's a good thing there. That's bringing uh, the town's been very proactive in that and trying to going out there and getting grants and uh, um, putting on meetings and, and so, uh, hosting meetings and workshops. And that's going to help us immensely uh, down the line when things come up for grants. We're one of the ones at the top that, that get it. So I uh, just want to let you know about that. So uh, during that process, I know I wasn't able to make it to the meeting here, but yeah, I've already, I'm I've already gone that. through it anyway. Yeah. So did you get the sources, like a fourth source or any of that listed on that? We talked about it at the meeting, so it was it was documented so down. And they go, had they put it go through with all your yeah, lists and but I wasn't sure at the time because I was just researching into it. I says we're still. I said this. This was our big thing of Station One, and that was a great thing. But I says also we're moving into the, into the you know identifying some kind of fourth source, and I, I'll go into that next. Uh, yeah, on that, you got to identify them. Yeah. During yes. the process, in order to get it on the list. Yeah, we broke out into the groups like you did, and did, and did the. Uh, uh, I don't. They did. I uh, remember I played a presentation on that. Yeah. I can't remember. I know it was brought up. I can't remember the exact. All of the exact things that were put on on that list. No, uh, okay, uh, number nine is. Why don't we put off nine until the end? Of, okay. Do all the reports. Um, I did. That could uh, take a little time. Upon the board's request, I did uh, get a bid submission for generators to be serviced, uh, both uh, two ways, both complete service, both generator and filters, oils, everything testing, or just the small test, uh, the small amount for just generators to be checked out. Um, that's all the stations. So the final, the final uh, quote is for all the water and sewer generators together uh, to be done as one contracted service. I believe it's like one is twenty nine, twenty nine seventy five. Uh, the other one's fourteen or something. And then fourteen hundred for. I, I'm just. I know you get. Uh, the board has asked me just to look into that, and and I, like I said, it's not something that we desperately need. I, both our departments do our own maintenance on the generators. Um, but if it made the board feel better, of course, we could do one time shot and go through them all and, you know, do that way or just uh, keep it on the back right now and, and, you know, it's there. So if you want to do it, you have at least a, a, a template to work from. But that's, that's what we came up with. Uh, and he services all, all types, not just standard cola, all types. Okay, all right. So the, the, and the, what, what is actually performed is listed. Yeah, they have a worksheet there. What's, what's there? Minor is steps five through 20 and major is um, all of them. Yeah. And like I said, we, so we do most of it ourselves. The difference is oil and f filters. Yeah. But it was asked to me last time just to look into it and see, and that's it right there. That's pretty much, uh, you know, subject to certain things may bring it up a little bit or what have you, but uh, that's, that's their common. Uh, uh, okay, that's from Power Pro? Power Products, yeah. Wakefield, yeah. Um, so that's it there. Um, the other thing is number 11. Uh, I'm looking for the board's permission. I'd like to dispose of the 150 pick, 2003 150 pickup truck, give it to the town administrator, the town uh, dog officer. They've been using it anyway because it's about all it's good for right now. It, it can't really service us anything. We can't haul with it. We can't plow good with it. It's rusted. Brakes have been having issues uh, along with a bunch of other things. Uh, we just end up destroying it, trying to haul generators and things with it. Um, and it would be appreciated, at least for now, for the uh, for it to go to the dog officer. All they do is go out and you know do dog officer stuff. So it's not like it's being abused or anything. Uh, right now, as far as plowing goes, myself and Luke use our trucks to plow the stations or the sewer yeah, department truck. trucks. Myself, yeah, Luke and I use our pickup trucks to plow the stations. Or I go out in the backhoe and do it, or or, or uh, the sewer department comes in with their sewer truck if they can do it and help us out with that. 
So because we can't use that truck for anything, because a seven foot plow is it's uh, all rusted out, and so it would end up destroying the truck and not serving any purpose for that. But anyway, I'm looking for permission just from the board so I can dispose of it uh, to the town administrator, and that will take the insurances off it and added costs and uh, to keep it on the road. Well, no, because you're putting it right back on a new truck. Well, down the line, yeah, but I mean, for now, at least, you know. So you just, you're at this point, you're looking to just get rid of that tour? First of all, that, that yeah, just that one. The sewer, do we need a another plow truck? Oh, that we did, we need a, another pickup truck, definitely. We're, we've got old trucks here. We don't, the only newer truck we have from the tour, 2018 was spec wrong when it was done. It wasn't spec for heavy duty work. Uh, I'm not going to get into why. I think you know, but uh, it, uh, it's going to be, I'm going to turn that truck into a smaller utility type of vehicle as far as a couple uh, user-friendly toolboxes and a lift gate in the back because our guys can't keep hauling 160-pound ca uh, bottles into the stations the way they're doing it off the back of the box truck, which is very high. Uh, I do have a lift on it, but it may, still makes it dangerous. And you're talking about these things being suspended up five, six feet in the air to come down. Um, the department, and this is, and I'll lead into the next one, um, I did spec out for a new, through MHQ, which is bidded uh, through Plymouth County, or I think it's something new now, uh, for it's around $43,000 truck, all heavy duty, 350, similar to the sewer truck, but a little stronger, uh, with a, a plow uh, and uh, everything everything heavy duty for our hauling. And, uh, I can't keep using the box truck to do all normal every day, running around uh, stuff work where that's designed to be heavy duty work only. Uh, we've been using it nonstop for everything else, including meter reading, uh, transporting from place to place, uh, things like that. Um, we, we, the truck that I drive a lot is, is the runaround little small 2007. Uh, that's developing some rust issues too. Uh, it's similar to the sewer, uh, the Parks and Rex truck, uh, Dennis's truck, and their truck is, is already gone. But we've kept it up so well, all I'm going to do is a little bit of rust work on it, and that should last me another couple of years at least for that. So that leaves us with a 2000, 2007, the light duty one with the six foot bed, the 2010 F550, which is the heavy duty box truck, which yeah. is meant for big work. Uh, that's hauling all the tools around with it all everywhere it goes. Uh, and then the 2018, which was bought a couple of years back, which wasn't spec properly, uh, is gonna be the new type of uh, secondary utility truck with a lift gate and a couple smaller toolboxes. So that we can do meter work on with that, other little smaller jobs. Uh, the plow unit on the the truck you want to give to the dog officer? That's that's a seven foot uh, old Fisher plow back in 2003. It doesn't work very well. It works, but it's not reliable, and you can't plow <laughs> heavy snow with it because the truck gets bogged down. I, I don't think the dog officer needs a needs a plow. I can't use the plow on anything else. It's already just been mounted for that truck. The frame rails are for that truck alone. They've already rusted on this. They're probably welded on there by now. So it's no purpose for us yeah, to keep the plow. Yeah, if we get rid of the truck, the plow is going to go with it. They might even, and, and they might even be able to use the plow just to do the general parking lot here uh, for the town too. It might benefit them that way, but it doesn't serve us any good. We can't plow the stations with it. Uh, it's, it's just too much wind row there for that truck to handle. It's light on its feet. It, it, it's it's getting into trouble with the front end, things like that. So that's my intention there is to put an article through, through borrowing uh, or whatever to, to put on a new truck. For this coming spring, I'll meet. I question. I remember questioning that when we, we the 2018. Yeah, uh, was I, a, I don't want to get into. Spec out as a 150. I, I wasn't very happy with how that truck was, was spec out. It wasn't spec out properly. 150 isn't what. No, that's not what our needs should have been. But I think with this new methodology of putting on a lift gate, which is aluminum, uh, it'll save our guys their backs by uh, putting equipment in the back through the lift gate. The truck's low to the ground, so it's not hot. Doesn't ride high up in the air. Uh, and I'll put a couple toolboxes off the side so we can have put some tools for normal uh, service calls and things with the box trucks running around doing right now. I'm um, not to say the box truck isn't going to still do its work, but it's doing everything. And I've already got 50-some thousand miles on it. And it's a 2010. And uh, it shouldn't be that many miles on a truck like that. It's, ma it's our mainline big work truck for main brakes. Yeah, like but that. it's 10 years old. And only 50,000 uh, miles. That ain't bad. It, for a town truck, it, it's up there. It's up there. It should have been a little bit. It should at least be in the 40s, somewhere in there. But that's okay. Like I said, it's a diesel motor. It, it, it's tough, but you know, I don't want to get into. I don't want to get it into all sorts of troubles where we're starting to fix things or fix damage or whatever like that. So. Um, 
I just need the board's permission on, on both those. What plowed? What plowed it just? I know you want the V. I, I, it'd be a eight I'm foot. just telling you that I, I bought the V plow and I wouldn't go back to a straight yeah. one again. It, it cuts my time in half doing yeah. stations. We don't. Have, I, I talked about it with the guys in the V plow and that, and they said, <coughs> well, I mean, for what our stations are and the cur curves, it really doesn't serve us because we have to get in some back crevices and things. I know the plow you're, you're talking about. Um, but like I mean, we, we're happy with the eight foots. So we've been having okay luck with those. Um, you know, like I said, sidewalks, things like that. We can get the machine up in there and just do the sidewalk parts where we wouldn't put a pickup truck through. So we're covered on a couple of minor things. But um, you know, I, I'm just kind of alive with just the standard eight foot. Try to keep my cost a little bit down, uh, just to keep us all happy with that. Well, the price of that plow looks almost like the price of the V plow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I see the V plow in action. I see the few things on that. Uh, but uh, you know, like I said, uh, I, I'm, can't you use the V plow as a straight plow? Yeah. So why why wouldn't you want the option? Because we really don't need it. It's not something on our stations that we because we're we're always moving into alleys and stuff with it in the fenced in areas of the stations. It's you know we're kind of used to doing it the way we have it. We just blow it off one way and just keep working it. I mean I know I a lot of it might work better. You can use it that way too. Yeah, I know, I know, it's I know. Standard. Yeah. Straight plow. It, it, what's the difference between the price? options? Yeah. I would, just, uh, I would I, check how much. I can check on the price, but it was another a thousand more for a V plow. It's like the plows are like fifty four hundred. That price is around pay. what I paid for the V plow. Um, I think I, I was just looking. You're talking about lift gates and things like that. I was just looking at this spec for the yeah, um, sixty four hundred bucks for the plow. I mean, the spec um, there's nothing the lift lifted there for um, for a lift. Yeah. That's not for that truck. Uh, the lift gate is about four why, grand. Why wouldn't you? I wouldn't put it on the new truck because I'm going to put it on this low truck the one the 2018 we have now it's an aluminum lift gate and I'm keeping everything low to the ground this truck is low to the ground it's only a 150 and I'm keeping it for service and for putting the chemicals into that truck so when we go out to chemical work we're back up to the station we're already low to the ground okay. and, and it's right. safer and it's only a four thousand dollars to put that and we have the money to do it to it put the lift gate on it makes the truck a little useful <laughs> it, you're right it makes okay. it very much useful okay. because it's really <clears throat> not useful so That's what do we, um, what do we need to do? Uh, just give me permission to dispose of the other truck and give me. Uh, I, I, I personally don't have any problem with disposing with the of the, with the 2003. Um, if it can be used by the town for anything, fine. Um, for what we're doing, I don't know. If you say it, it, it's it, a 17-year-old F-150 is probably not is not capable of doing anything heavy anymore. Uh, in, in 17 years in a municipal environment is 10 times worse than. No, oh yeah, years I, 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 I've, I've seen. Vehicles. I've seen. That's why we're going heavy duty. I don't want to have this problem again. And that so at, at least as far as disposing of that truck, if we're not using it, we might as well get it off of our books. If the town wants to take it up to theirs, great. Let them. If, if this new truck comes into play, as far as the town meeting goes, everything's all set. You won't see it here until August anyway. But uh, so what's, uh, does anybody have any objection to that? To the disposal? Yeah, disposal. To disposal? I have no objection. Okay, so. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I guess, um, yeah, the, the disposal is, uh, do we need to put that in the form of a motion? Yes. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. You want to do that? Uh, Make a motion to give George permission to donate the 2003 F-150 to the Animal Control Officer and or Town Administrator, the Administrator for use. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You know. Okay. And the other one would just be the approval of this for the to start the process for the uh, so you're gonna article get us for the new one. You're going to get us a price first on the... I have it 40. I have it right No, I mean, plow. For the plow. It's all, to get the, all the B plow. I'd have to get a price on the B plow. I can call see, what you, see, what the, uh, see what the addition is on it. Yeah. Um, that, uh, what, we, what, we don't have to have articles in until April, isn't it? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's right near the end I of April. I haven't gotten anything yet. I, I heard them during one of the selectmen's meetings. I'm pretty sure that was... You probably need to get a placeholder. Just put a placeholder in, but then the final yeah. numbers is probably it, it, it changed that probably by being by a thousand or twelve hundred bucks or something like that for a yeah. people versus April. Well, he's saying that's almost yeah. what he paid for his. So if we can get a VPOW for the same price and do the same job, but give you more options, so I'm telling you, once you use it, you won't want to buy a straight one again. <laughs> 
It's uh, <coughs> don't come over your place and fall. <laughs> so yeah, I'll wait for the. Um, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, we have time, so it's. I believe it's April twenty seventh. That. Right. Date well, if you want to hold on it, I'll get the price from yeah, through I, MHQ I on a V cloud. Did, did you get a price from anyone else other than MHQ? No, because it comes in under their bid process too. So uh, That's they state get bid. they get a break. Well, I know it's state bid, but if you actually read the bid, <coughs> the, the, the procurement laws. I could get one through Carl down here. Even though it's state motors. bid, you're still supposed to get three prices technically, but. Okay. Um, yeah, I get. Get some other well, prices. Well, if by bidding through MHQ, I'm I'm already able to call that bid. It's they've already procured. I know, it's just, it's but I know what you're saying. I could, I could call place too and call them and see what because I know one of the guys down there runs the plow thing. I could see if he can. That's where I got my do plow better with. That's why I'm thinking they might be a little cheaper on their plow anyway. Yeah, they might. Like I said, uh, I can try that. But just, um, I would just cross out the prices and send this spec out to a couple other places and just see what you get for a price. They they have tried to do a state bid. Place has been doing some state bidding too on some of these trucks and things like that. Um, I tried it once with one of our other trucks. Um, they came close, but they couldn't quite get to it. I could try them again because I know the owner there and see if, if he can. If they don't beat it, they don't beat it. Beat it, it they don't beat it. Yeah. But I think we need to do right? diligence. You'd, you know. What I don't know is if because MHQ is under the procurement that they we we don't have to rebid we don't have to bid out with it except you know but. Are they by having them? I don't know. I might have to get some more bids to a couple other agencies. So uh, yeah, as long as you get three prices, it you just think they can uh, uh, they can black out the prices, like you, like you said, black out all the uh, all the black out the quote and <laughs> hand that out, and you know, and then add, add the um, yeah, you've got the regular eight foot heavy duty plow and. And just see what the add in, the add in the V and or V plow, or v plow. Yeah. and or V plow, and see what the difference in prices right. are. Yeah, I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go down a place and uh, see my, my buddies over there and see if we can come up with a, you know, similar thing. They, they know what we we all go through in HQ too anyway, so it's not a surprise. I can hand them and say, hey, you do. you do better. And you never know; they might be like, hey, we're down on sales. Let's yeah, cut them a deal. Maybe we can get some. Yeah, and I and I also tried for a 2019. So if there's some way to get a 2019 versus a left 20, over. Yeah. a leftover at, at the time of the after everything's done, send done, I'll be more than happy to do that. I don't care. I just you know. Okay. Um, uh, anything remarkable in the sewer? Nothing really. Uh, Oh, uh, number um, uh, eight. I'm sorry, number nine. Um, oh yeah, we had to go the back fourth to water. Oh yeah, I'll go back yeah. to the yeah. water. Yeah, um, I, I just wanted to be, get through the I, stuff. Um, after and I, I think I explained it the last time. I I had conversation with Ken Bukevich, um back a few months ago uh, before his passing um, regarding, and he came to me actually because he was aware that I was looking for land area in town for, for a well. And he came up with this area down off of New Boston Road behind Edwards Drive, Blue Heron Drive, uh, runs to Carpenter Road. There's a rail trail that goes all the way, matter of fact, to the Connecticut line all the way back through the town. But there's an area of 17 acres roughly down there he mentioned to possibly put a water station down in there if we, if we deemed an adequate water supply. Uh, and the only reason I sparked my interest is because we've exhausted most other areas in town not to say they may not have water, but to say is the amount of years of time going to take to, to try to grab something, either through eminent domain or, or whatever, or negotiation, is going to take an immense amount of time. And the aquifer in those areas down there are plenty full of water. Um, and it got me thinking to go uh, look at that to, for any viable water, because if it turns out that we could do something there, I can, I can actually uh, pump up the water up through Eagle Drive area, up into the backside of Gentex property, and possibly put another small uh, reservoir tank and pump it directly to the downtown area up in there, without without coinciding with the other main, because I wouldn't be able to do it that way. The pressure would destroy the the mains yeah. in that area. But uh, on the other hand, too, some of that land is conservation, so I'm in contact with the conservation committee. I'm trying to see what my restrictions may be, if I have any. There's a parcel there that's not in the conservation belt. It's about six acres. The, the station maybe can go in there. Uh, there's a bunch of things working right now. It's just a shot in the dark. The, the selectman, uh, the town administrator, gave me permission, written permission to do any type of drilling I want to do at any time I want to do it. It's not like it's going to be tomorrow. 
It won't be down the line. It's are the drill guys still? They're not still here, are they? No, it's when Station One's project is gone going with the drill people. We'll send them down there to just do test welding. Once they all the ifs, ands, and buts are uh, questions are out, and I know what I can do. Um, and if I hit water there and ra able to grab on the aquifers, that would be a major fine. We could we could actually put a nice station. Where would there. you put the tank? The tank would be probably something below Gentex property, somewhere down in the backside there. If if that's yeah, and, and that would give us some uh, better redundancy for water for the state. To look at it, that we have a good back good amount of supply. Um, like I said, this is all preliminary, just a shot in the dark, just to see if this this will actually have water. Uh, the engineers were out with me, uh, uh, looking at this, and they thought it was a good idea too. I had the tie and bond. I had a, a hydrogeologist out with me, the Frank Sullivan out with me. We showed them what my plan was. Uh, they said this seems like a very good idea because you guys, are, because the town is restricted in where we can go, uh, pond another well down. And even if we do West Dudley area, you've got all transite mains out there. Uh, it's not very good to do that, pumping a new well into a trans transite side of the town. Look, looking at it on, I ha you have your maps. I, I on, have on, on the map. I, I pulled it up on the uh, on the internet uh, mapping and. Um, there's a, there's, a good size, there's a good size pond. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I there's want that area pond, back yeah. there. Uh, um, I know where the conservation the conservation land is primarily behind Blue Heron Edwards Drive area. Um, when, but as you go towards Carpenter Road on the rail trail, it turns to a area where the town owns that's not conservation. Okay. I believe there's a few acres in it. Is there is there enough space? And in, in looking at this map, um, you've got Jonathan Pass on one side of it, Brookstone Edwards Blue. Uh, Blue Heron and uh, Valgo on the other side of it. Is there enough room with setbacks and everything else? We, we, we hope to think that there is. And like I said, I have yeah, to go yeah, to I the have, DV. I mean, before, before, before we go too far, um, we want to make sure we've got, we would have enough room there. I, I have Looking to. at some of these backyards, you know, that kind of squashes that property in quite a bit. I don't know how much you have to, I can't remember exactly how at much you have At a minimum, you need a 400 foot zone one. Zone one type of thing, yeah. I think we got that. Um, they're not depending on if I unless you get a clean zone. Yeah. So okay, that's. So I have to look, but I have to look and see what the <coughs> conservation rules are for for that too. Yeah, that would know, be our buffer. Is, yeah. Well, uh, as a public utility, you're somewhat exempt from the conservation. Six. So you can get around that. There. That's what I'm hoping. To but play nice. And yeah. Ask for permission. That's and I'm going through <laughs> the processes <laughs> now. Okay. Yeah. So. So yeah, I mean, <coughs> from somewhere right in the middle of where that little area circle is, right where the A is, yeah, somewhere in that area, that'll get about a six, you'll have about a 600 foot, no. Well, six. you just need, uh, remember you know, one thing, the station be, can go right back. Back. The you well can be put in another location and come into the station. There's a way that you know we can we can move things a little bit if we have. Yeah, to. but you okay, need, you're you need the 400 to foot, 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 foot radius foot around, around where the well is. You're going to have to get close to the pond to get 400 feet away from that lot 40 on Jonathan Pass. The 400 feet can go into that pond? Yeah. Oh, go, go in that direction. Up. Yeah, you just have to be 50 feet away from any standing water in order to get out of the groundwater rule. Yeah. yeah. It should be. Under the influence. It just, it just looks like it, 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 it could work. Yeah. But let's make sure before we... We go too uh, far, we, and then we find out. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to. I don't want to start uh, putting everybody's hopes up that this is going to be great going on. Going. I'm just saying. No, but it looks. No, look, it's looks a possibility to, to explore in segments in a time that we have, uh, and not take away from Station One. Get that moving and shaking and all that. You know, there's water. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Uh, you know, there's, there's so much plentiful recovery down there. It, it, it's it's you know just the sake of piping it up. <coughs> and I could add services to certain parts where there's no water main. As I go up to, uh, and go up to the only time is when we go through Eagle Drive subdivision area somewhere in the back side or the front side, depending on what kind of reaction we get from the from the people up there. You know, they may want to say, "Hey, bring it through us someday. We'll tie in if our wells go." Who knows? Uh, you know, it's 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 just a bunch of talk uh, sh shots in the dark right now. What we're doing, but anyway, I just want to let the board know that we're now, we are doing some kind of you know idea of trying to get forth. Quite sure about the the regs on the water side. I know for ex sewer expansion, we need two thirds of the abutters. Is it the same on the water? The, um, no, no this I don't. The pumping station. That's not going to. You're not talking about. No, but about if you wanted to end up putting services, the, uh, it, it would the be no. They're not required. It would just be stubs would be going off to the property lines and then stopped. 
and then if they want in the future to tie in, they have the stubs right there, like, like Susan Drive, like we're talking up there, something similar to that. Because um, certain parts of that area that I'm looking at is a non-water main area, like Carpenter Road. There's no water main on that side where I want to go up. So, that, of course, they'd be more than happy to have the stubs stop there. And it's not going to affect them anyway, just if they want to tie into it, they'll it's, have that it, option. It's a little different than, a little than bit, expanding little bit. the system than, yeah. than because you, this is an actual water source right. line. The state, it's, the it's, state it's, the it's DP is very high, high end on as far as water sources. And, yeah. You know, for a town like us who are having issues with this, uh, their attention is now on to me as far as getting all this stuff. And the fourth would be not, they'd be more than happy to take take a look at what I have in mind for the fourth water source. And the state's very good at helping you along with certain things if you come into bumps in the road with that. Um, but like I said, I want to just do, take it one step at a time, um, very slowly, and you know, get my eggs in the basket as far as if we can even put something in there, what the conservation issues are, what the DEP issues are, uh, all that. Uh, you, you know, but I also want to test it. Uh, if it comes to that point, because that's going to be the big player uh, to see what's there. That's it, kind of in a nutshell. <laughs> okay. Um, and I know it's not on the agenda, but um, in our packet, we've also got a uh, copy of our annual report. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I put together the uh, annual for, uh, report from 2019 for, uh, for, for reading materials. Just kind of a basis of what we've been doing, what we got going, um, water and sewer bowl. Standard format for uh, town report. Okay. Um, um, there's another thing I just wanted to bring up, and I maybe I shouldn't, but uh, I, I was, we've been having issues as far as the equipment and the sewer department staying outside all the time. With none, you know, they've been, it's, the trucks have been staying out all the time. Uh, they're kind of squished up in there. And I was looking at possibility of putting up some kind of Morton building on that site. Until I talked with Mike and Tim a little bit, we had a little powwow about something that we overlooked and we looked at. The building that's there now, the three-stall garage that's there in place now, they have a small two-bay two and, and the bigger one that's a three-bay. When that three-bay was built back in, by Bay Path, it was built width-wise too short. So you can't put a truck in there. Uh, the doors are too small. You can't back it in. You can't even get fit it. And so the trucks stay outside. The generators are all kind of stuffed in there width-wise. So we kind of looked at it and we were saying, wait a minute now, why can't we use it lengthwise? Because there's plenty of length there. Mm -hmm. So I says, why don't we put a single white door on the opposite side and then we leave one door for one of the big generators to go in and we could not only fit the generator in there to put two other trucks in there and that would leave spots in where the jet jetter is now is to put uh, stuff in the jetter bay and the jetter would be easier to put in and the other trucks would all fit in there. So I'm kind of looking at, uh, I've got a custom, I've got a uh, countryside door coming mm -hmm. down next week. We're going to look at possibly blowing out the bricks, make a new frame for the door, and, and put a single door there and change everything around so everything comes in uh, lengthwise. Coming from the... The, the, the pond, the, pond riverside. the riverside. We just put a stone driveway type thing in there, simple. They back right, they can do it now even if they want. It's, it's hard pan uh, soil. Go in, back in, back it right in, and... The big generators would be easy to accessible, just back in and grab them. They don't have to go all the way in the building. And the other trucks would be inside along with the Jetta. And You'd have I think to go around the two-stall two garage, right? The, some of the equipment would go on the two-stall. Yeah, but you have to drive I'll around the... Drive around the other, yeah. So you're but talking you about on the south side of the... Uh, south end of the building, blow out the south end of the building? Of the south end so of the building, drive, drive around the two-stall back. You know, as you're making the angle, you're going to be angling down and then backing in anyway. So right, it, but that, my concern is... And I don't remember how the depth of the the sewer line is on that side of the the sewer line that shoots across the river. The Webster is on that pipe is to the left more. I think we're to the left on that more. We're right there, right around the building itself, right right next to the building and coming around. That pipe comes in on the left. I think more on that side, on the left side. I don't think we're going to be any right. I think there. it angles towards where the manhole is in the parking lot there. Yeah, it that's where we're, we're going to be hitting it right to the right as we go around the building. From that manhole, it shoots. To the, it shoots off to the right a little bit. Shoots towards the built the two. A little bit towards the building, but it's straight, more of a straight on. We're going to be to the left of that and around on the other side, so we shouldn't have any trouble at all. Uh, we're going to be almost hugging the building as we go around, just the way it's going to be designed anyway. Uh, we drive equipment back there anyway. Stuff you know, uh, it's not like it's it's uh, we don't do it. But I thought 
after after we all had our discussion about it, I thought it was a good idea. I think that will save us on a cost of a new building. The building's all insulated anyway. It's electric already in the building. It's just a matter of putting a single wide, 12 foot wide door. Uh, give plenty of room to back anything we need into that into that building. That way. So that's what we're moving towards right now. I just want to let you guys know. I didn't want to say anything yet, Phil, but I was a little bit. We were losing price first. It's yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's. Um, it may need just we blow the wall out. May just need some brick work to make it nice and to make square. a frame. Yeah. Frame and yeah. then and then the door itself. Country, you know, countryside does our work at the water department. They do a good job. They're reasonable. So they're going to just give us an idea. Flat what, as well. Yeah. That's all I have right now. Okay. Um, public comments? Nope. Um, any board members have any comments or concerns or anything they'd like to bring up? Let me keep this channel. Okay. Yeah, that's all yours. Okay, I will. Um, no, I'm, I'm good. <coughs> um, so, Take with that. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs>